Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you've uh, been cutting dovetails, particularly in softer wood, and you find that in between the tails you get a lot of uh, fiber breaking and big chunks coming out, it's really irritating. I dealt with that for a long time until I came up with a solution. And prior to coming up with this solution, it didn't matter how sharp the chisel was, I, uh, for whatever reason, it would still cause this problem. So I started playing around with the primary bevel. And most chisels come with a 30 degree primary bevel, some 25, I prefer 25 for general use, hardwoods. But what I did is I started grinding a lower and lower angle, more and more acute. And when I got down to 17 degrees, I could work in the softest of woods and it would cut beautifully without fracturing. So I'm going to show you how I did that and then I'll show you what the results are. So I've got a protractor. I'm just going to measure this one first. I just took this off my chisel rack. Here's the... Uh, I typically keep two chisels at that 17 degrees, a half inch and a quarter inch. And uh, you can't use those in hardwoods, by the way. But I happen to have two 3 8 inch, so I'm going to do one of the 3 8 as well, and I'll show you how I grind it. Well, the first thing I want to do is find out what the angle of this is. My guess is that's higher than 25 degrees. Right there. And if we look, we are at 29, and I want to get down to 17, which is going to put me right about there. So, guesswork at first, I'm going to come over to the bench grinder, and all I know is that I've got to take the heel off of this chisel, or off of this bevel. So I'll set that up, just going to guess at it at first, lock that into position, and I like to have that face and that grinder wheel really opened up, and I, I do that using this style of wheel dresser, it makes it very aggressive. Now I'm not going to film all of this because it's going to take a while, and when you're dealing with uh, grinding a new bevel like this, you can't rush it, you have to have to go slow and avoid burning the chisel. I just wanna, there's where I'm working right here. It's about time for a new wheel. I can't get the tool rack any closer than I am. Now the back of this chisel has already been done as you can see the polish. And I just keep checking this crest line right there to see if I'm keeping it square. If I'm not, then I may have to move my chisel this way or this way as I move it laterally across the face. But this seems to be working out all right. And I keep my hand, my fingers up close to the end so if it's getting too hot, I can tell and that'll give me a chance to cool it off. Let me get that. I use the uh, Hone Rate, which is a water additive that helps prevent water from rusting metal. Really handy stuff. Light touch. If you apply too much pressure, you're going to generate so much friction and heat that it's going to burn on you. Not so much when you're way back here where there's lots of metal, but as you get closer to the end, then it becomes a lot more difficult to prevent burning. So you may as well get used to that light touch now where you're practicing getting rid of the bulk of the metal from the uh, heel. Now, when I get enough that I can register the protractor, which I do now, I'll check it again and see if I'm close to that 17 degree angle that I want. If I'm not, I can adjust the tool rest now. So all I'm doing is just pushing that in until it touches across the uh, across that flat part of the bevel, that section right there from the end or from the crest to there that I've already ground. And that is showing up as just uh, under or uh, just above t about 21 22 degrees so you ready
Okay, so I've got to take a, I've got to take this heel down a little bit more. So I'm going to adjust this rest. Just pull it up a little bit higher. Lock it. Now you can see the new facet right there. Can you can you pick that up on the camera? Yep. It won't take long to expand that or widen that new facet enough that I can go in and check it with the protractor and see if I'm at my 17. And as I may have mentioned, when I, fa when I was experimenting with this, I took it down to 20, sharpened it, tried it. Worked better, but not as good as I wanted. Took it a little bit lower. When I finally was at 17, that's when it worked perfectly. And the reason I don't go to 16, 15, or anything lower is you just, at that cute of an angle, you don't have any material out there to speak of. And uh, your edge is rather weak. All right, let's try this again. I can't see, I need a piece of white paper or something directly behind. Okay, so that's registering at 18, and that's really close. I'll try moving it just a little bit more. Now what comes into play with this, if you'll notice, that because of the width of the tool rest, I'm resting on the cone or the socket portion of the chisel. It's not laying flat like this. Not that that matters, it's just you have to take that into account when you're trying to get the angle you actually want. I'll check this one more time. Once I see that we've got it at 17, then I'll set the camera down, I'll finish the grind, or at least almost finish it and then turn it back on when we're really close to the edge. Alright, that's enough register. Okay, that's 17. So, let me, uh, let me get some of this done, and when I, like I said, when we're really close, we'll, uh, We'll turn the camera on just how I show you how I finish off that last little bit. Talk to you about being really careful and then we'll actually hone the edge and try to. Okay, I'm getting close, but I want to show you something. Now, whether or not your grinder, the end, the end of your tool rest is actually parallel to the front of the stone, it's not always that precise. So even though I've been holding it what appears to be square, at least square to the front edge of the tool rest. If I look at this, I'm a little higher on the right side than I'm on the left. Now when I turn it back like that, the right becomes the left. So instead of holding it perpendicular to the end of the tool rest, I'm actually going to turn on a little bit of an angle. See if I can't square it up. got a little bit to go. Uh, one more thing I wanted to caution you too, that the smaller the diameter of the wheel, the more pronounced the hollow grind is going to be. And in order to get a 17 degree angle, what we're measuring is, we're measuring from out here at the tip and that, the toe and the heel. So once that says 17 degrees, if you've got a narrow stone, a di small diameter stone like a six inch, it's going to be really pronounced and you're going to have very little metal out there. I actually had to go in and I readjusted this and moved it down just a little bit because it was going down too low. But it's time for me to get a new uh, a new grinding wheel as well. So when I'm down this close to being out of the edge, the problem is there's very little metal there and it's easy to burn. So you just have to go even lighter with your touch. Call for even more patience because you've been here five minutes already. 
that last little bit can easily take you an additional 10. Keep checking it. If it gets too hot, spray it, cool it down. Or you can dip it. I just don't have a can of water handy. take that, you can see what's left of the original polished bevel, and I want to cut that in half. Can you see that? There it is, right there. I want to go down a little bit further still. Check again to make sure I'm keeping it square, and I'm off again a little bit, so I've got to come back around. If you're going to take the time to do this, you need to do it with a chisel that has decent quality steel. You get a cheap, inexpensive chisel and that edge will fold on you even in time. And no manufacturer is going to recommend that you put a 17 degree grind on your chisel. So if it does fail, you really don't have any recourse with the manufacturer. Starting from scratch, I would go through and I would prepare the back of your chisel. I've done some YouTube videos on that. You go through and flatten first and then polish through the various grits. Again, I'm checking to make sure I'm square here. And I'm, I'm pretty much where I want to be. And by keeping the chisel tight to the face of the tool rest, you end up with one nice clean facet, not multiple. Okay. And just another 30 seconds or so. Okay. That's, uh, that's close enough. Okay, now we'll go over here. I'm, I'm going to use two stones, my 1,000 and my 16,000. First thing I'll do is use the 300 grit side, which is the opposite of the 1,000, to go in here and flatten my ceramic 16,000. No maintenance required on the diamond plate. Put a layer of hone right on both. Lay that down on the primary bevel. It's really easy to find, a big wide bevel like that. And raise it up just a few, just a degree or less. I don't want a lot. Now on a narrow chisel, you may find it's easier to just move forward and back instead of doing circles. Circles, if you're inexperienced, inexperienced will have a tendency to uh, put a skew on it. Now I want to be able to feel a little bit of a burr on the back side, and I can't yet, so I've got to do a little bit more. Light to moderate pressure. Hands are tied together so that this is an easy or it's easy to uh, freehand and keep the uh, angle consistent. Now I can feel a little bit of burr on the back side, so I'm going to switch to my 16,000, find my primary, raise up just a little bit higher than I did on that previous tone. So if I went up one degree over there, I'm up maybe two degrees here. Well, about five seconds of work just to polish a leading edge, or what we would end up calling a tertiary bevel, and then lay the chisel on its back in just a couple of seconds to get rid of any burr. Now, clean that off and try it. Now this is a very fragile edge. You've got to be careful with it. You can't pry. You certainly don't want to use it in hardwoods. My recommendation would be to use something like this in uh, aspen, uh, pine, basswood, alder, anything that you have a difficult time chopping and preventing it from uh, fracturing. So we should be able to come in here, and this is this is uh, northern white pine. You can tell by the growth rings; it's fast growth wood. It's very soft.
and there's the nice clean cut that we get. That same wood with a with a sharp 25 degree chisel even, and you're gonna get fractures. But cut it down like that, and it, it'll just serve you extremely well. And I'll just, in closing, I'll pare a little bit on the end by hand and show you how nice and clean that cuts. And that's actually going against the grain if you figure that out. Flat back makes a chisel very predictable. And the sharp it is, it just makes it a pleasure to use. Very little effort required. There you go. So my recommendation, out of your set of chisels, get an extra half and an extra quarter and grind them down to 17 degrees and preserve those just for dealing with those woods that have a tendency to fracture really bad when you're chopping them. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.